Welcome to Technology Tips, a video series presented by the J. Lewis Crozier Library. We are so glad that you have joined us today. And this video is designed specifically for middle school and high school teachers. And it's going to show you some of the many online resources that are available to you and your students through um, the J. Lewis Crozier Library, which is part of the Delaware County Library System. So let's get started. We are going to look at a number of resources that are available, and we're going to look at the ones specifically um, categorized as for teens. So we're going to filter by an audience and then filter by a category, which will get us more into subject areas. Since this is from the Crozier Library, we're going to start at our website. And when you're here, you'll see that you can connect to our calendar and look at our upcoming events. You can search the library catalog for books and other materials. And then at the bottom of the page, you will see a link to Delaware County Libraries. So if you'll click on that, that will take you to delcolibraries.org, our county library website, and we are going to explore e-resources. Now, when we get here, there are a host of resources and you have uh, a couple choices. You can search by keyword. So if you're looking for ancient history or automobile repair, you can search on that keyword or phrase. You can filter by category and you'll see some of them are career oriented and then some of them are um, educational subject matter. And then you can also filter by audience. So we are going to filter by audience initially. That's still going to give us a huge list of resources when we filter by teens. If you've got some students who could use some tutoring Homework help is available through the Power Library. Um, so kids can log on here, either teens or kids. There are resources there, uh, test prep, and they can get some help for homework through there. You'll also notice then these are in alphabetical order and there are kind of general databases like Academic One File. You'll see a number of news databases. And then we have um, a collection of history databases and um, literature slash language arts databases. And then there are also databases on education and science, lots of different um, kinds of resources that are available for you and your students. You can also access um, all of our EBSCO ebooks through here and um, some basic encyclopedias as well are available some specific encyclopedias. There's also help now. So besides the Power Library resources, there's also help now from BrainFuse and your students can get direct interactive help um, through BrainFuse. So that might be a resource you wanna point students to. We're gonna take a quick look at um, how some of these databases look and work. So let's go to the History Research Center, which is really where all of the facts on file history databases are located. And you'll see that we have a number of different, um, mainly either um, categories of history or chronological approach to history. So let's take a quick look in the ancient and medieval history. And once you're in here now, you will need your library card to log in. So you can't access it without a library card. You'll see there's primary sources, maps and graphs, videos and slideshows and biography. That's what's featured. A couple things to point out here. There are some curriculum tools for students to especially develop historical thinking and then a few tools for educators. The other aspect of the info-based databases is that you can create uh, an account. So when you click on my research, you can sign in with your Google account or create your own username and password, and then searches and um, resources that you find can be saved to my research into some folders, and then you can go back and access them later. So this could be a good resource both for you to enhance um, your teaching or for students. There are timelines, there are themes, there are a number of slideshows and videos, and we're gonna talk at the end of this video, um, just a reminder of some settings that you might need to make sure you've chosen if you are going to use your computer audio as part of your online instruction. So these are a number of the history databases that are available. Um, we also have quite a few uh, literature slash language arts available. I do wanna look at, um, 
these Gale um, InfoTrack student um, play their their um, multidisciplinary databases. But let's look specifically because they are. Um, um, designed for different levels of students. So this is the middle school one. So there's an elementary one, a middle school one, and a high school one, Gale in context. And let's search for, um, let's search for sharks. So we're doing um, a research project, maybe in science, and we're gonna look at, we want some information about sharks. So we can see what we have, 28 reference articles, two biographies, a number of magazine articles. I also can do some filtering as well, content level, filter by Lexile measure, so I can get documents that will meet my students' needs. One of the nice things about Gale is at the very top of the page, there is the Google Classroom icon. And if I click on that icon, it will take me to my Google Classroom, provided I'm logged in. I can choose my class, and then I can choose my action. What do I wanna do with this article? Um, let's actually make sure we pick an article first. Let's do this one. Let's look at the just the general Encyclopedia of Science, the Gale Encyclopedia of Science. There's an article, a um, lot of basic information about sharks. Um, tells me up here how long it is, what my content level is, level four, what my Lexile measure is. Um, and then I can save it to Google Drive if I want to, but I can also post it directly to my classroom. So we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna make this material and I'm going to then um, sharks and I'm gonna say, read this article and um, write three new facts you learned. All right, so that's what we're gonna ask folks to do. I can post it directly or I can schedule it or just save a draft. So all the things that I do in Google Classroom, I can do with this article that I found in this database. Choose some students to read it. We're gonna post it. I then can view it in class. And there it is. I posted new material. Now what's nice about this is my students can access this article from the Gale and Context Middle School database without logging in to the database. If they wanna look for any other articles from that article, they're gonna to have to log in with their library card, but to read this article that I've chosen for my class, students do not need to log in. So that is a nice perk that comes with the Gale databases. And then in some of the other databases, you can save to Google Drive and then just take that one more step to get from Google Drive into your Google Classroom, if indeed that's the platform that you're using. Um, there is a database in Spanish. One of Gail's databases is available in Spanish, if that would be helpful for your students. And again, if you look at all of those categories, there are lots of different databases that are available um, to help you and your students. Just a quick reminder, you do need to think about how you're going to use the material, especially if it involves computer audio. Is this um, in a synchronous or an asynchronous setting? And you may need to change your computer settings. So just a reminder, if you wanna play computer audio in a Zoom meeting, when you share your screen, make sure that you choose the share computer sound box and check that box before you share it. If you're, um, meeting in Google Meet, then you wanna to go to settings from the three dots at the bottom, choose the audio settings, and then you wanna change the microphone to the stereo mix. That will get you your, com your computer audio. And then when that um, clip is done and you wanna to talk to your students again, you'll have to change the settings back to the default microphone. Um, if you are recording, for asynchronous instruction, just double check with whatever um, platform you're using to record if you have to change some settings in order to get the computer audio to record with you. So just, just be aware of that. I'm sure if you've got any questions or issues, the tech folks in your school will be able to help you out. If you need a library card, you can email support at delcolibraries.org or you can go directly to delcolibraries.org and scroll down where it says get a library card and you can sign up 
for one right here, register online, or there's an application form that you can drop off at the library. If you teach in Delaware County, but you don't live in Delaware County, we are still able to get you a library card. So please call us at the Crozier Library at 610-494-3454, and we will be happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can email us at jlcrozierlibrary um, at gmail.com or give us a call and we will be happy to help you in any way that we can. And um, we are thinking about you as you are doing this monumental task of teaching online. Thanks again for watching.